Welcome class of 2021 and all the parents, faculty, staff, trustees, and friends of Webster University. We gather here today in a virtual environment from locations around the world in a spirit of celebration. While we could not gather in person, we are connected in spirit, a community of students, faculty, and staff on four continents celebrating the completion of your degrees and certificates today. All of us at Webster, and every friend and family member who has supported our graduates is filled with pride today. We celebrate not only what you have achieved, but also how you achieved it and what that means for your future. The past year offered challenges most had never seen before, but you kept your eye on the prize and you persevered through disruption and hardship. The resilience you have shown through the pandemic will serve you all well as you navigate the next steps of your lives and in your careers. As chair of the Board of Trustees for Webster, I am personally proud of how this global community has pulled together and remained focused on the mission, providing and attaining transformative educational experiences. So on behalf of the Board of Trustees, I welcome our guests today and congratulate our graduates. I encourage you to relish this moment celebrate with one another, and look to the future with hope and enthusiasm. And now I welcome Dr. Beth Strobel, Chancellor of Webster University. Thank you, Chairman Reg. Greetings, graduates, faculty, and staff. Today is a moment of celebration and hope. While we are disappointed that we cannot celebrate together in our traditional commencement ceremony, this moment represents great promise for the future, your future. Graduates, the first promise comes from your degree or certificate. What an achievement. Over the past year, you took classes live from your homes. You collaborated with one another from great distances. You learned from faculty members stationed around the world. You exhibited great discipline and patience while adjusting to public health requirements, social isolation, and the requirements for your Webster degree. The fact you are graduating during a pandemic is a testament to your ability to overcome adversity and to strive for something better. And each day, we see signs that indeed the opportunity to attain something better is just around the corner. 
That leads me to the second promise this day holds. What lies ahead for you? The challenges through which you have persevered, have prepared yourself and proven to yourself that you can achieve great things. Now, with Webster University degree in hand, you have the experience, the wisdom, and the poise to take the next step in your lives and your careers. When our world experiences turmoil or crisis, we look not only for comfort and reassurance, but also leadership and inspiration. You graduates can now provide that inspiration for others in the example you set and the ideas that you bring to life. And finally, today brings the promise of hope. Over the past year, the entire world has come together to overcome challenges we could not have foreseen just 16 months ago. Global citizens in science, in public policy, in business have put aside differences in national borders to achieve the monumental task of creating and distributing multiple vaccines. People in public health and the arts have worked to keep us grounded and healthy through it all. Humanity, as a whole, possesses many different beliefs, traditions, and points of view. The global effort of the past year demonstrates that we do best when we face those differences with the spirit of inclusion rather than using them as a reason to turn away from one another. I trust that all of you can take heart and as Webster lifelong learners and leaders, you will take what you have learned and apply it to a more hopeful future. I wish you the best of luck now and in the future. Congratulations. Now, we will hear congratulations from Webster University's president, Dr. Julian Schuster. Thank you, Dr. Strobel. Graduates, it is our honor to celebrate you today. In the future, when you look back at your time at Webster University, I'm sure it will be difficult to separate your final year here from the experience of the pandemic. But it is my sincere hope, when you have those reflections, you will also recall a foundation that served you throughout your time with Webster, the wisdom of remaining true to your values. You graduate during a time of unprecedented disruption. I refer not only to the pandemic, but also to the social, geopolitical, and economic tensions that surround us. These issues cross borders, they overlap economic sectors, and they encompass every demographic. All of us, everyone in your graduating class, everybody around the world faced similar challenges and obstacles over the past year. But if we stay true to our values, we know that we do not face obstacles in the same way. Rather, we should face them with the understanding that different situations require different plans of action. I know that each of you has already faced such decisions. For example, when the pandemic began over a year ago, you no doubt asked yourself questions. Can I continue with my studies? Do I have the support I need? What if I get sick or someone close to me faces unexpected disruption? We at Webster face these decisions as well. And believe me when I say they were agonizing ones. Because Webster as a community reflects the world. That means it is diverse, it is complex. It consists of many people from different cultures with different needs and different goals. In short, there is no one-size-fits-all answer. So last spring, we had students from abroad who were not able to get home. We had students whose goals would be altered if we changed course or we were unable to offer alternative learning environments. There were 
any number of variables affecting our students and our employees. Thankfully, with a community of faculty and staff who constantly sought to find solutions to our student needs, we were able to do best we could with, as they say, the cards we were dealt. I mention this not to revisit that time of uncertainty, but rather to reflect in two ways. First, look at what all of us went through together. We are almost to the other side, and you now have your degree or certificate to show for it. While you surely did not choose the condition presented to you, you did choose not to give up. You can now proudly say, as a result, that you can accomplish anything. Second, look at how this experience can be a guide for you in the future. No matter what the new challenges you face, and there will be challenges, remember to understand from a broad perspective all of the circumstances you are facing. Do not overwhelm yourself with the inputs, but do design a plan that is true to your values, one that is right for you and those for whom you are responsible. Fine-tune your approach for what is in front of you, and not, as they say, to simply do what everyone else is doing. Because certainly, how you handle obstacles defines who you are and how you are perceived. But more importantly, it will determine what you get out of life, out of career, and indeed, how you make the most of your Webster education. So graduates, as you join the network of more than 200,000 Webster University's alumni around the world, I salute you. I thank you for being one of us. I hope that the relationships, the curricula, and the experiences you had at Webster, that you take them with you for the rest of your lives. And I congratulate you, the Webster University Class of 2021. As a part of our annual ceremony, we also celebrate members of our community who can serve as an inspiration to our graduating class. The conferring of honorary degrees is a Webster tradition where we recognize the impact of the people who have made great contributions for the betterment of our communities both locally and globally. This year, our Chair of the Board of Trustees, Rob Ragg, will present the two honorary degree candidates. Thank you, President Schuster. Jackie Joyner Kersey is a record-breaking Olympic athlete, an inspiring speaker and philanthropist, and a driven advocate for the betterment of our communities. Her tireless advocacy for children's education health issues, racial equality, and women's rights is an example for our graduates and indeed our world. Her vision has helped other renowned athletes like her create a multiplying effect, inspiring millions to support charitable causes. Jenny Jackson Browning is a pillar of our community, a genuine soul and longtime friend of Webster University. Her passion for science and the arts has made countless opportunities possible for our students. Her leadership for several organizations has helped sustain St. Louis and Webster University as a symbiotic center of performing arts. The phrase that I think so well describes Jenny is, bloom where you're planted. She is one of the most intelligent women I have ever known. She's, she's gentle, she's kind of quiet, but that feeling of joy comes forth and she puts people at ease. She puts her heart into everything that she does. Bold enough to imagine transformation, well-grounded to make it happen and to help others to achieve their dreams.
Not only does Jenny bloom where she has planted, she makes sure all the rest of us do too. And that is the gift that she has given to us at Webster. We have truly bloomed because of Jenny Browning's presence and friendship. Jenny was drawn into Webster by a number of things. First and foremost, I think the students. As she began to know the students and see their commitment and see their potential. She loves learning about new thoughts, ideas, processes, sciences. And I think it's the sciences that really get her going the most. Her imagination led toward envisioning an interdisciplinary science building at Webster University. Her determination to help us to achieve that resulted in the Browning Hall, a transformational building, transformational place of science, art, and success at Webster University. We walked in yesterday, my daughters and I, and I saw this building for the first time. I was just overwhelmed. It is so beautiful and so perfect. Ginny has been a board member for 30 years and is a life board member. And in 2014, for our centennial, she generously named the Virginia J. Browning Primary School at CID, our program for children 6 to 12. Jenny has a true passion for the performing arts, and it shows through her relationship with Webster University, her support for the Community Music School, and her support for our partners. Jenny was on the ground floor, I think, of, of certainly opera theater, uh, very dedicated, was on the board of uh, the rep. She was there to do whatever needed to be done to advance the mission and the goal of these organizations. The arts were and still are very important to Jenny. The amount of love that she has and shares with everyone that's dear to her is incredible. Jenny came for the ribbon cutting ceremony and we hung her picture on the wall. Some of the children said to their coordinating teacher, who is that? And the coordinator, Mrs. Hudson, said, that's Mrs. Browning, and I know her, and I visited her home, and the children were absolutely starstruck. They said, you know her? She's so famous, and so she's really a living legend in the Virginia J. Browning Primary School at CID. Jenny deserves this recognition from Webster because of her long, long-term commitment and dedication to this institution. She has this incredible passion for our children and our organization. And one of the things I love about Ginny is she puts her heart into everything that she does. She has such a warm, bright, loving spirit that to be around her feels like an honor in itself. Ginny, I am humbled yet delighted to celebrate along with the Webster community this event. Thank you for everything what you did for Webster University. Congratulations, Dr. Browning. I want to congratulate you from the bottom of my heart on your wonderful, well-deserved Doctor of Laws degree from Webster University. We're so proud of you and wish you all the best. Congratulations on receiving this honor from Webster. Yes, Webster is honoring you, but you have honored Webster for decades through everything that you have done and continue to do for us. And you have honored me by being my friend. Congratulations, Jenny. I'm blown away and so proud of you. I love you so much. You are incredibly inspiring. Jenny, with great pride, I say to you, congratulations, Dr. Virginia Jackson Browning. I grew up in East St. Louis, Illinois. 
it was extremely tough. We didn't have warm water running through the home. There were times we didn't have heat, but it was just a, a home filled with love, discipline, about respect, and, and working hard and never giving up. I saw someone look like me at the Olympics and I just thought that, well, maybe one day I can get on TV by going to the Olympics. And so I remember going to Coach Fanoa and saying that I wanted to go to the Olympics and he said that I had the potential, but I had to be willing to work hard. My freshman year at UCLA, I, I lost my mom unexpectedly you know, to the worst form of meningitis. And now the one person that I could always pick the phone up and talk to is no longer there. Either I come back to East St. Louis and help raise my two sisters, or I continue on that journey of going to college. It didn't take long for her to realize that the dream that her mother had for her was to make sure that she received her education and uh, the scholarship that she was on was the biggest opportunity at that time. Jack was going into Olympic Games as the, as the favorite. And she had already set the American record. The week before he we went to her trials, Jackie pulled a hamstring. You know, even though she lost the gold medal by two tenths of a second, it was tough for me to watch, but I really wanted my sister to win the gold medal because I knew I was the long shot. I was so happy for my brother to come away with the gold medal in the triple jump. When they played the national anthem, I got down to her, you know, and uh, and she was crying. And I said, I said, I said, oh, don't don't worry about it. You'll be back. And she said, I'm not crying because I lost. I'm crying because you fooled them all. And uh, and that still touched me because uh, that was my sister. And it's a picture of us raising our hand. And I'm saying thank you, God, but also saying hi, hi to mom. The greatest female athlete of a century. It is amazing. Equally amazing is her philanthropy her personal generosity, and her grassroots advocacy to assure even greater opportunity for girls and boys academically and athletically. She took 100 plus students to New York City to the Macy's Day Parade in 1988 when she got the double goal in Seoul. That was incredible. It was the first time in life I had ever been on a plane. She chartered a plane. She spent a lot of her own money. It was a weekend trip for us, but Jackie Joyner Kersey made sure that she took the opportunity to expose young people to a lot of the opportunities that she had. She didn't take them selfishly for herself. She made sure that she shared them with all of us. She did that back in 1988, and she's still doing that today. That will always be the linchpin to Jackie, the athlete, and then Jackie, the humanitarian. I came through a community center when I was younger, and that community center had a tremendous impact on my life. And little did I know, when I would go to the community center in 1981, the center had padlocks on the door, and I just started thinking, where do the young people go? I wanted the young people to see me, touch me, have a conversation with me. I believe in having a dream. I believe in working hard to bring that dream to a reality with the support of people who saw the potential in me that I did not know that I had. So in return, being here is very, very important to me. She generously exchanged her global fame and plethora of gold medals for building a continued success and happiness of children of St. Louis communities. She could say it on the West Coast. She could say it anywhere in the world. But she has chosen to do her work, her God-given work, here in East St. Louis, where hope and aspiration is definitely needed. She has served the community and served others 
and that she has done because she has such a big heart for giving and for serving. She is just a stand-up, wonderful human being. And she really cares about people and she cares about the community and the work that she does. Because she's the most unselfish person. She give everything she has to help the other person become the best they possibly can be. It has been an honor to host her as a speaker and to recognize her as a champion for all at our annual DEI conference. I am honored. I am blessed to receive that honorary doctorate. I will wear it proudly and let people know how blessed I am to receive the honorary doctorate from Western University. I would like to say congratulations, Jackie Joanna Kersey. You are an amazing human being. Their talents were incomparable then, but your character is still incomparable now. God bless you ridiculously for all that you have done for others and for everything that you continue to do. No one is more deserving than you. I'm proud of you. Congratulations. Continue on the path that you are. Stay focused because I think at an early age, you realize what your purpose in life was, is, and every day to me, you continue to live it out. And thank God for allowing you to see this throughout the years. Jackie, I love you. And I really, really, really say congratulations for all the things that you have done and the things that you continue to do. I'm so proud of you. And, you know, words can never express how much I love you, that you are my best friend. You don't want to go to, you want to call even though you're my little sister. This is from me, give me a big hug in front of the family. Congratulations, sis. Jackie, the race is still going on and your timing in this lap is perfect. Congratulations, Dr. Jackie Joyner Kersey. With our sincere admiration and respect, I am glad to congratulate you, Dr. Jackie Joyner Kersey. Chancellor Strobel, I am honored to present to you these two candidates for honorary degrees. Thank you, Chairman Reg. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the State of Missouri and upon recommendation of the Board of Trustees, I hereby confer upon Jacqueline Joyner Kersey, the Doctor of Humane Letters, Honoris Causa degree. Upon Virginia Jenny Jackson Browning, the Doctor of Laws, Honoris Causa degree. Dr. Joyner Kersey and Dr. Browning, on behalf of Webster University, I'm proud to welcome you as honorary degree recipients and to include your names in the roles of the distinguished recipients who have come before you. Congratulations. And now it is my pleasure to introduce our 2021 commencement speaker, Dr. Jackie Joyner Kersey. I want to take this opportunity to say how honored and a privilege that I think it is for me to be able to share this exciting moment with all the graduates, their family, and everyone else who is attending this graduation. But more importantly, I wanna thank Dr. Schuster, as well as Dr. Strobo, the Board of Trustees, and also all the dignitaries and all the professors and everyone who have played a major role in making sure that our graduates make it to this day. As a young person growing up in the community of East St. Louis and having big ideas having dreams and not knowing how those dreams were, were going to become a reality, but knowing through the love and the support of my family and friends that I was able to go on and make Olympic teams, meet people from all walks of life. But more importantly, it helped me to bring back my heart and soul into my community of East St. Louis. And now, as I turn my attention to the most important thing of today is the graduates, is that each and every one of you have dealt with some difficult times, but more importantly, 
you have learned to persevere. You have had the desire to see it through, the dedication and the determination and grit to not to give up. Graduates, when I talk about perseverance, I wanna just share a story about myself. I talk about I grew up in East St. Louis, Illinois, and I had to travel to Los Angeles to attend my university of choice. But through those tough times, I'm diagnosed as an asthmatic. All of a sudden now, my dreams of wanting to make the Olympic team is it's probably not gonna happen. But then also, the most important person to me, my, mo my mother, I lose her unexpectedly to the worst form of meningitis. And I have to travel back to my hometown of East St. Louis and bury my mother. I'm 18 years of age. Now I don't have a place to live. I have two younger sister and my older, older brother. So the conversations I would have with my mother was about graduating from college. And if the opportunity ever presented itself, now I'm faced with a dilemma. Do I stay back here and try to raise my brother or my brother's the oldest, but I'm the oldest girl and a lot of the responsibility was put on me. The one thing, the one thing that I had going for me was I had a scholarship and a dorm room and a cafeteria where I can go get all the food I could ever want. So I remember the whispers of my mother's voice is to get back on that airplane and go back to school and fight through what I thought was one of my darkest moments, is to never give up. Think about the little girl running up and down the streets. Maybe one day I have an opportunity to go to the Olympics. Experiencing that, dealing with injury, but never giving up. When others said that it couldn't be done, I found a way to get it done. And it just wasn't me. Is that even though my mother was no longer there, but I had my coach, I had my teammates, and I had my family. And as I speak to each and every one of you, is that you have your professors, you have your teammates, you have your classmates, you have your family, you have your friends, and even in your darkest moments, during this toughest time, we all had to pivot during COVID. But graduates, I can say, you have persevered. Your desire did not change. Your direction did not change. Your dedication remained the same. Your determination and grit was elevated because the character that you possess of a winning attitude is in each and every one of you. And now as you carry on this journey in the next steps of your life, is that remember that there were people there along the way who gave you an inspiration word or also a pat on the back. And now in return, make sure that you don't forget and find a way to share your stories about how difficult it had been in the last few years and knowing that in your lifetime, you would be able to share that you dealt with a pandemic while trying to persevere to reach the ultimate goal of being here today. So I applaud you with all of my heart. So as you stand up and rise above, because you did not let the pandemic stop you for achieving something that most might have thought was impossible. But my favorite quote, the impossible is probable. So to the graduates, to your family and to your friends, 
we probably never thought this day would ever come. But this day is here. And it's your time to celebrate, to not only thank your parents, thank your friends, your loved ones, but also thank your professors. Those who were there when you think they weren't pulling, walking this course with you. So again, I want to sum it up by saying, congratulations, graduate. And as you walk out into this world, it is an oasis. You have the power to change minds because you have demonstrated it through tough times. And as I said about that desire, that determination, that grit, dedication, you have lived it and you have your own story to share. But more importantly, don't forget to find ways to give back. And giving back might not mean you have to have a lot of money. It's having resources, resources or relationships. And you can turn those relationships eventually into monetary benefits of knowing that Western University was here for you during some of your toughest time. And even when you thought it was your darkest moments, but now the sun is shining, and as you smile, congratulations, graduates. All the best. Chancellor Strobel, I present candidates for the following degrees from the College of Arts and Sciences. Doctor of Nurse Anesthesia Practice, Master of Arts, Master of Science, Master of Science in Nursing, Bachelor of Science, Bachelor of Science in Nursing, Bachelor of Arts, Undergraduate Certificates, Graduate Certificates. Chancellor Strobel, I present for the following degrees from George Herbert Walker School of Business and Technology, Doctor of Management, Master of Business Administration, Master of Science, Master of Arts, Master of Health Administration, Master of Public Administration, Bachelor of Science, Bachelor of Arts, Undergraduate Certificates, Graduate Certificates. And now, Chancellor Strobel, I present candidates for the following degrees from the School of Communications. Master of Arts, Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Science, Undergraduate Certificates. Chancellor Strobel, I present candidates for the following degrees from the School of Education. Doctor of Education, Educational Specialists, Master of Educational Technology, Master of Arts in Teaching, Master of Arts, Bachelor of Arts, Graduate Certificates. And now, Chancellor Strobel, I present candidates for the following degrees from the Lee Jardin College of Fine Arts. Master of Music, Master of Arts, Master of Fine Arts, Bachelor of Fine Arts, Bachelor of Music, Bachelor of Music Education, Bachelor of Arts, Undergraduate Certificates. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Webster University and with the recommendation of the university faculty, I hereby confer upon each member of the class of 2021 the bachelor's, master, doctoral degree or certificate with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities pertaining thereto. Your names will be permanently entered on the rolls as alumni of Webster University you may now move your tassels from right to left to signify your new status as graduates of Webster University. Congratulations. Graduates, you are now members of the exclusive worldwide club of over 200,000 Webster alumni. To welcome you to the Alumni Association, I present Alexandria McCune from the classes of 2011, 2015 and 2018 
who is president of your Alumni Association. Thank you, Chancellor Strobel, and congratulations to the class of 2021. On behalf of Webster alumni worldwide, I welcome you as the newest members of the Webster University Alumni Association. Today, you are joining more than 200,000 men and women worldwide who have earned Webster University degrees. That is truly remarkable. As the world continues to navigate these challenging times, you have learned many things, patience, resilience, and above all, the power of human connection and community. The mission of the Alumni Association is to foster community to help alumni stay connected to the university and to each other. Now more than ever, that need for connection is vital. Although this may be the culmination of one chapter in your life, your relationship with Webster University does not end today. It is a lifelong relationship. We, the Webster University Alumni Association will always be here for you. From special events and reunion celebrations to career resources and networking opportunities, we have much to offer. And as our newest Alumni Association members, you also have much to offer. Please stay connected to Webster as you continue on your journey. Proudly list Webster University on your LinkedIn profile, like us on the Alumni Association Facebook page and share your Webster pride wherever you go. I look forward to seeing you again as you pursue your next adventure. Thank you, Alexandria. Traditionally, at this point in our main ceremony, I ask family, friends, teachers, and other supporters of graduates to stand and be recognized because we know that with rare exceptions, the path of education and achievement is not traveled alone, but rather with support and encouragement from so many. Today, like so many traditions altered by our circumstances, we cannot enjoy that standing ovation together. But I ask each of you to reflect on the many human connections and helping hands that have helped you reach this moment. Please join me in thanking the faculty, staff, family, friends, alumni, and donors who have helped to make this success possible for you. And now to mark that success, the dean of your college or school will share sentiments for their respective graduates. Thank you for joining us today and congratulations to the class of 2021. I wanna welcome all of you today to Webster's 2021 graduation. Congratulations, graduates. This is your day, you've made it. All those long days of study and your persistence have brought you here to this moment. You should be very proud of your achievement and it's a time to celebrate. I can assure you as a parent myself that it's also an especially proud day for your parents, your family, and others that share in your achievement. I'd also like to say that many of the faculty members who have supported you, provided you some advising, and challenged you are here in spirit, full of pride and joy for all of your accomplishments. Some of you are entering the teaching profession for the first time, and some of you are completing your advanced degrees in education. I hope you realize that as educators, you will teach the young people of today that will become the doctors, nurses, scientists, and teachers of tomorrow as well as many other careers. Today, we want you to know that you have become and will forevermore be part of our learning community. We measure our success in your success. We hope you will stay in touch so that we can support you as you continue in your career as an educator. Let me summarize my thoughts to you on this graduation day. I know you will leave this celebration with a strong foundation of knowledge in your discipline and that you will start your career in great earnest. Remember, however, that making a commitment to contributing actively to your community and the world will also have its rewards. You may want to serve on a school committee where you teach, volunteer time for a community event, or serve in a leadership role in a professional association. I promise you that all of those activities will bring you many exciting opportunities 
and the great satisfaction of knowing that you're contributing towards something that will make your community and the world a better place. I also encourage you to commit to a goal of lifelong learning in this ever-changing and challenging world. It will bring many opportunities to your career as well as your own personal life. I would like to share a quote related to lifelong learning and the open-mindedness that comes from this endeavor. John Dewey, as you know from your studies, is a noted educational philosopher. He defined the disposition of open-mindedness as freedom of prejudice, partisanship, and such other habits as close the mind and make it unwilling to consider new problems and entertain new ideas. And finally, I want to share one more quote given long ago by Harry Truman. He said, you can accomplish anything in life, provided you do not mind who gets the credit. In closing, everyone watching here today is celebrating your accomplishment in completing your degree at Webster University. But we know, and you know, that many people are to be recognized for your success here today. I'd like to recognize some of them right now. Your family members and friends have been there to support you along your journey. And the faculty have worked with you to achieve your goal. And finally, I would like to recognize our fantastic staff who work daily to ensure the smooth operations of our programs and services. I congratulate all of you. You are to be commended for attaining this great achievement. Thank you. Thank you.